Brian Rich is here today to talk to us about inherited homes and a specific scenario. What would happen if the beneficiaries of an inherited home decided not to sell it? They decided they wanted to retain it and convert it into a rental property. What kind of things could happen if they decided to do that, Brian? So uh, first, thanks for having me. Um, one of the things, obviously, when you change from a property being used as a home into a rental property is that you lose the principal residence exemption that is allowed in the state of Michigan. So the average millage rate in Michigan is 42 mills and a mill is a dollar per thousand of taxable value. So, um, and ranges in Michigan go from over a hundred mills down to less than 20 mills, depending on your municipality. Um, but so on average, the principal residence exemption might be worth 40% in savings. So there are two different sets of rules. Obviously, if the property is being used for rental, as the, the case you've described, um, none of that property will qualify for the principal residence exemption. And if you don't notify the municipality, they are allowed to go back for years and reassess the property or retax the property as non-principal residence exemption eligible. And that will result in a substantial tax bill. Right, um, right. So if the homestead taxes per year would have been 5,000, and that's the rate that the beneficiaries are paying until the time that they're notified that they don't qualify. Let's say 40% of that, they're gonna owe, let's say on a conservative side, $3,000 extra per year times back several years, that could be a hefty tax bill. That is absolutely the case. Um, so that is something to keep in mind when determining if there will be conversion to uh, rental use, um, if it will still be held for personal use. Uh, it's very important to make sure that the pr appropriate forms are filed where the new owner notifies the municipality that they are the new owner and that's done through a property transfer affidavit and a request for the principal residence exemption. And then that new owner will be eligible for uh, taking that exemption. In the event someone forgets to do that, they could face the reassessment and the new tax. And then rather than taking the time to file two one-page forms, they will have to appear in front of the board of review and attempt to argue that yes, the principal residence exemption should have applied and what the procedures were. And that becomes much more complicated and potentially much more expensive. Um, one other thing to keep in mind completely separate from the tax issue is always check the zoning and your homeowner association or condo association bylaws because there may be restrictions in converting from personal use to rental use. And you could spend a lot of money getting tenants in and then have them be thrown out either by the governmental entity or by your own governing association. And that's a surprise that nobody wants. So best to consult with qualified legal counsel before you make those decisions so that you make sure not to have those problems. Thank you so much for that great advice. 
and everyone can check out Brian's contact information below in the comments.